Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. The International Space Station's historic one-year expedition has been a mission of numbers, one that could add up to huge benefits for future space exploration, including the journey to Mars, as well as for life on Earth. In March 2015, two space explorers, Scott Kelly of NASA and Russia's Mikhail Kornienko, set out on an unprecedented odyssey to the one and only laboratory in microgravity to conduct a multitude of biomedical and psychological studies on how the human body reacts to long-duration spaceflight. Based on a scheduled March 1st return to Earth, the one-year crew's 340 days in space will have seen almost 400 experiments conducted aboard the station, 5,440 orbits of the Earth, and Kelly and Kornienko will have traveled a total of about 143,846,525 miles, roughly the distance of a trip from Earth to Mars. You know, Misha and I are only, you know, one uh, one data point really, or you know, you need a lot more numbers um, to draw specific conclusions, but I'm hoping what we find is a lot of information that will help us eventually, you know, continue our path towards Mars. We'll have more on the one year cruise return to Earth on the next episode of This Week at NASA. Meanwhile, the next crew headed to the space station, Expedition 4748, featuring NASA astronaut Jeff Williams, continues its pre launch activities. Williams and crewmates Alexei Ovchinin and Oleg Skripochka of Roscosmos conducted final qualification training at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia on February 24th and 25th. Ovchinin, Williams and Skripochka are scheduled to launch on March 18th Eastern Time from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The trio will spend six months on the space station. NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Technology, Steve Jerzyk, was on hand for a recent media day at Made in Space Incorporated, an American-based startup company located at NASA's research park at Moffett Field, California. A Made in Space 3D printer was the first of its type on the International Space Station. The company's versatile in-space robotic precision manufacturing and assembly system project was one of nine recently selected through a NASA program to mature technologies beyond what's known as their tipping point and qualify them for market while delivering technologies and capabilities needed for future NASA missions and commercial applications. The 20-foot deep hydro impact basin at NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia is being used to evaluate a full-scale test article of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner spacecraft. Although the spacecraft is designed to land on solid ground, the company is testing in water in the unlikely case that an emergency during launch or ascent would make a water landing necessary. The testing is part of the qualification phase required by NASA to ensure the Starliner is ready to carry astronauts to and from the International Space Station from the United States. In celebration of Black History Month, NASA's Office of Diversity and Equal Opportunity, in partnership with the Headquarters Equal Opportunity and Diversity Management Office and History Program Office, sponsored a program at Headquarters on February 24th, showcasing the historic journey to demographic diversity within NASA. Special guests included Richard Paul and Stephen Moss, authors of the book We Could Not Fail, which profiles 10 pioneer African-American space workers whose personal stories illustrate the role NASA and the space program played in promoting civil rights. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov slash twan.